Opening a business in Japan is not for the faint-hearted. Plenty of big companies with deep pockets have failed here. There are plenty who have succeeded, though. Let's pull back the velvet curtain and get real on leading a business here in Japan. Welcome back to year four of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Storer, your corporate coaching and training guy, and I'm the president of Dale Cutting Edge Training Japan and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. And my new book is Japan Presentations Mastery. Bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minato-ku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are looking at giving you a big edge in business of Japan. Let's be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 186 the art of leading a foreign business in Japan. So let's get going. Running your own business is challenging anywhere, but Japan adds a bit of spice to the broth. According to official statistics, 70% of Japanese companies are unprofitable. Business seems pretty simple at one level, constantly seek to increase revenues and reduce or hold down costs. To increase revenues, you can find more customers, more repeater customers, and raise prices. Raising prices in Japan gets tough when you are in the churning wash of decades of deflation and where there are always lots and lots of competitors. When the consumption tax was raised the last two times, the economy immediately took a hit, which indicates the price sensitivity of the populace. The usual way of differentiating yourself and justifying higher prices is through the added value you provide. Naturally, there is a major sales and marketing effort required to get that value measure out. Both options in Japan, however, come with high price tags. By the way, whenever we do training as part of a global arrangement, we always get pushback on the pricing in Japan, especially when the yen is converted to other currencies. Why overseas head office staff would imagine the pricing here should be the same as at home is a mystery. But that is often the expectation. The cost structures here in Tokyo for wages and rents are high relative to other countries, and the prices reflect that. I refer these global partners back to their own local operations here in Japan and look at the wages and rent bills they have here in Tokyo. And I point out these are nothing like what they are costing at home. So why expect global pricing to be uniform? In general, fixed costs as a percentage of revenue are high in Tokyo, and it is a struggle to get them down. Unlike other Western countries where salespeople are prepared to work on 100% commission, on that basis, very few Japanese staff are attracted by that option. Again, this opportunity to move wage costs away from fixed to variable is less available here. This means there must be a base salary plus bonus or commission arrangement, and the base will be relatively high, especially if you are a foreign operation, as you need to attract potential employees, and uh, particularly when it's a startup. In 2007, we did our startup. We had to pay our sales staff close to double the norm to get them to work for us. That hurt. We had no choice. By the way, 
add another 15% to your wages bill for all the various social insurance and pension costs. Of course, if you are a prestigious mega corporation encapsulated by a powerful brand, this attracting staff challenge may be not so much of an issue. If you're a small, medium enterprise, SME, then attracting people becomes more competitive. If your team needs to speak some, at some reasonable level of English, then the wages bill goes up immediately. There is also a limited supply of Japanese who want to work in an international environment, and that number is declining rapidly as less and less young people go overseas to study. We are currently in the midst of a real turning point regarding the internationalization and globalization of the younger generation. The young don't want to learn English and they don't want to live overseas because everything is so wonderful here in Japan and it's safe. In the future, they are going to become almost impossible to hire for SMEs as we are simply outbid by bigger companies. Marketing in Japan, especially in Tokyo, is a remorseless pit into which you have to throw lots of money. Print ads and content marketing driven advertorial are very expensive here and the local publishers have plenty of Japanese companies able and willing to pay. So trying to cut a deal is fraught. Television predominates with 15 second ads. So even if you can afford the big money involved, your appeal to buyers in that time is microscopic. Online banner ads are not expensive. Pay-per-click keyword search ads and Facebook ads are also not cheap and can burn through cash at an alarming rate. Few Japanese are using LinkedIn as yet, so it is mainly targeting a foreign audience at this point. PR is a viable option for brand awareness, but you get what you pay for. SMEs can really pony up the type of money required to get the PR agency's A team. So don't expect any particular marketing magic from the D team. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the Leadership Training for Managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Welcome back. Japanese websites are often the complete antithesis of the zen-like Western approach. Garish colors, packed screen real estate are very common here. So what do you do? Go zen or go garish? Do you have the cash to pay for a Japanese language copywriter? Or do you do it all internally to save money? Are your team members any good at it? Your SEO has to be fine-tuned to push yourself forward in the page rankings. And you need people who know what they are doing as do-it-yourself is cheaper but a lot harder. These resources may be in-house or on contract, but they still push up the wages bill. 
Networking in Japan is different to Western countries in that few Japanese go to these events all that willing to meet new people. Sound promising? The meeting charges are also expensive as well. So if your team are really getting out there, the costs can be significant for what is really a shotgun marketing effort. It sounds crazy, but the usual style is that someone you know introduces you to someone they know. This is acceptable, if quite limited in scope. Bounding up to complete strangers and introducing yourself is possible, but the reactions are often mild shock, blank stares, and some resistance. This negative response is applied to Japanese as well as foreign staff working the room. And working the room hasn't quite made it here yet as a concept. Cold as opposed to warm approaches are also tricky. Sending a direct mail piece to someone unknown goes straight in the bin. Any email from an unknown entity simply gets deleted unread. You can cold call here, but you really need to know the person's name. If you don't, you will usually get blocked at the entry point, promised that your message will get passed on and a return call offered if they are interested. You will never hear back from them. There is always the issue of what you are offering may work overseas, but it won't work here. If you bring global statistics, then there had better be a Japanese component of that survey, or the whole thing is just dismissed as irrelevant. That means you have to pay to run the same survey here to show the significance of your findings for the Japanese market. This costs money. Testimonials from overseas companies, super brands or otherwise, are also invalid by definition. You need a local track record to be credible and skepticism reigns without relief. Disasters, especially earthquakes, are a constant prospect and all of us living in Tokyo know we are overdue for the big one. After the triple whammy of earthquake, tsunami and nuclear core meltdown in Fukushima a few years ago, our training business ground to a halt for four months of no cash flow. Who wants to do training when you're having large numbers of major aftershocks every single day for months? COVID hasn't been any fun either, as companies have canceled their scheduled training. We know it is important, but it is at moments like these, we really understand the importance of cash flow in a business. This was a painful period for many businesses to get enough cash to keep going. And in fact, many disappeared as a direct result. The good news is that in Japan, you do get paid by clients. Also, Japanese companies prefer the devil they know. So if you supply value, then you can expect repeat business. Staff are hardworking and diligent. People are honest, neat, polite, and things work here. Also, there is fantastic infrastructure. There are large numbers of foreign corporates with businesses here who are more open than a lot of domestic companies to your approach. There are English language magazines aimed at these expatriate leaders, which because of the limited market, cost a fraction of the Japanese mainstream media. There are many foreign chambers of commerce, business associations and study groups here. So there are many networking opportunities where you can actually work the room. And after COVID, we'll get back to that. The rule of law applies here, and legal disputes that have to go to court are few and far between. Like anywhere, there are criminal gangs, Yakuza, extorting businesses, but they tend to leave foreigners alone. 
and prefer to exploit the locals as it is a lot easier. Because of Japan's extremely strict immigration and refugee policies, there are very few ethnic or religious groups who are likely to cause Japan much trouble. The biggest non-Japanese ethnic group are Koreans. The majority were born here after the war because their grandparents were brought here during the pre-war and war years as forced labor. There are some foreigners here illegally overstaying their visas, but they are keeping a very low profile because the Japanese government deports them once found immediately. Japan is still the third largest economy in the world. The main leisure activities here are, well, for the majority of the populace, to shop and to eat. Many foreign companies have done well here. They've found the formula for success, but few have done that rapidly. Long-term planning, patience, grit, and sustainability take on different dimensions here in Japan. All in all, Japan is a land of opportunity. Progress just comes more slowly here and with great difficulty. But if you stick it out, then it will come. There are plenty of foreigners who've made a success of their businesses here. Adopt some samurai-style grit and keep going. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And so please subscribe on YouTube. Share with your family, friends, and colleagues. Become a regular. Our website details are on screen now, enjapan.dalecunny.com. It's awesome value, so please check it out. We try to offer as much value as possible, so you might also enjoy our other shows. In fact, we are releasing content six days a week. For podcasts, Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday for the Presentations Japan Series, and every second Tuesday for the Business Touches You Know Us Year Show, Wednesdays for the Sales Japan Series, Thursdays for the Leadership Japan Series, every second Thursday for the Business Pro Podcast Show, Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show, and Saturdays for Japan's top business interviews, wherever you get your podcast. Also, every second Thursday, we release the Business Supro Television Show. Every Friday, the Japan Business Mastery Show. And every Saturday, Japan's top business interviews on YouTube. We appreciate your support. Please let others know about it so they can benefit too. We want to make a contribution to helping people build their careers and businesses. And please join us in that endeavor. In episode 187, 187, we're talking about huge auditorium presentations are complex. So, yoroshiku onegaitashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you. I've got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.